Hey y'all, it's Steve Hobo with Wood, and today we are going to do perforations. That's right, perforations. Now, uh, if you're working with light burn and you're using your laser to cut and engrave wood, and only wood, well, I don't know that you would use perforations on any of your wood crafting projects. But, if you play with cardstock, which I do a lot of, I do my own earring backing boards, and uh, and I've been playing with creating tea lights, uh, and don't know how well this shows up in the video, but <clears throat> this is um, some rando tea light box that I made, you got a little hole here where you can drop your little flameless candle in there, and then the light shines through the geometric shapes, and the deer in this case. And also uh, working on boxes that can be used as Christmas ornaments uh, or small gift boxes. Uh, well, being able to bend your paper uh, with ease is crucial on creating little boxes like this. And that is achieved with using perforation. Uh, and there is a real simple setting in Lightburn to allow you to do perforations. Uh, and to demonstrate that, we'll jump in here to Lightburn and draw a simple square here and go over our cuts and layers. And here we've got this set up as a, in a simple line mode and depending on our power and our speed, this would either be an engrave or a cut. Uh, right now you see the uh, since this is the object that's selected, you can see the ants or the Vegas lights chasing around that perimeter of that square. Uh, but that's just letting you know that that's what's highlighted. But you can actually cut, or yeah, cut, because you're not engraving. You can actually cut your cardstock to where it looks just like that in a perforated. Now, mind you, they're not going to be moving, of course. Some of somebody out there will go, "Hey, man, my perforation is static." Well, now they probably wouldn't use static because if they're silly enough to think that their perforation is going to look like that, they wouldn't know to use the word static. But anyway, um, to achieve perforations, all you need to do is it's not in your which layer it's in; it's in your layer settings. And you've all seen your cut settings here. This is where you set your speed and your power, number of passes, any kerf offset if you don't want to use any kerf. But right here, you may not have paid it any attention or didn't know how or what to use it or when to use it, but here's your perforation mode. If you enable that, you can then come in here and set your uh, pulse on your laser to create that perforation. Now, uh, this is using inches, and if we go out of here, in fact, if you see here, pay attention, right now it's point double alt 39, uh, 10 hundred thousandths, 39 thousandths. Uh, well, how big is that? I, I, I'm not that sure how big a 39 thousandths perforation would be, but if you come up here and change this to inches, and I'm not well versed in the excuse me, the metric system, but I know how big a centimeter is, I know how big a millimeter is, and uh, now that I've changed that to millimeters here, this is now working in the metric system, and if I turn on my perforation mode, all right, that's telling me it's one-tenth of one millimeter. To cut and then skip an equal amount of one-tenth per millimeter. Uh, and you can adjust this to whatever size you want. Uh, don't know why you would, but if you wanted to do a, a full millimeter, uh, then you would just tell it one and one. And that's going to cut a millimeter, skip a millimeter, cut a millimeter, skip a millimeter. And I guess it would depend on the size of your perforation. And also, um, I, 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 I've been working with 80-pound cardstock. Uh, I find that to be some of the best car, uh, weight for doing my earring cards. It's sturdy enough to stand up, uh, support the weight of the earrings. 
uh, and it also makes these boxes really, really well. Um, a lot of people work with corrugated paper. Um, I don't know how perforations would work with the corrugated uh, materials simply because how thick it is and you, you've essentially got three layers there. You know, your top layer, your corrugation, and the lower layer. So uh, you might have to try that and let me know how perforation works on corrugated stuff. But it's that simple. So uh, I'm going to do my first video for Patreon where I'm going to go in and do a demonstration on how to actually create this little box. Now this box as opposed to this box now this box I ended up cutting out the design there in the side and then I said well that's that's fine if you're going to use it as a decoration only and these are small scale you can depending on the size paper you work with this was cut out of one continuous piece on an eight and a half by eleven and because it is one continuous piece uh, when you stretch her out she's uh, uh, 11 inches so that's why this box had to be so small. You can get larger paper and on the X tool I think you can cut up to about around 16 square uh, piece of material. Uh, but when you're cutting this completely out now you've eliminated the chance of using this as a small gift box even if it was just something like a small piece of hard candy or whatever uh, because you you can see through it so I elected to do perforations so now I get the design built in there and not only the design but I can also do perforated names on the top of the box so perforations are not limited to just pieces you want to fold. You can actually incorporate it into designs if you were doing a, a larger. Uh, now, this is a uh, uh, the, the tea light box that I made. I also made that out of the 8.5 by 11. But because it uh, doesn't have the extra tree standing up on top, uh, like here, it doesn't have, and it's that's two sides, I was able to make it bigger out of 8.5 by 11. But by putting the complete cutouts in there and putting a little small candleless flame in there, you get the emission of light through the designs. Well, you could do the same thing with your perforations. Uh, if this was a large scale and you uh, did a perforated design, now you're going to have just that small amount of light emitting through this, those perforations, which could have a pretty neat effect. So that was a very quick demonstration on how to use and when to use and where to use and how to set up perforations in Lightburn right there so I hope you found this useful I hope you found that <clears throat> informative and if you want to see more on if I go in here my art library we'll pull up my paper design here I'm actually going to go in and add, get rid of that one. I'm going to uh, do a video showing how I create and design and what to think about when you're setting these up. But that design there is that box. So, uh, jump over to Patreon, look for Hobo with Wood, and uh, let's design, let's create. So this has been Steve, Hobo with Wood, and this has been a shorty bit of goody, I hope, and we'll see you in the next video. I'm out.